Hello, welcome back to the channel. And we've had a very, very sunny April, so it's time to look back at my solar stats for April. And I've also had my heat pump fitted, so I'll be able to look at the data for the last six days um, of April since that was installed. So anyway, before I go on, uh, please hit the subscribe button, it massively helps the channel. So, as I'll explain throughout this video, some of my fingers, figures may not be entirely accurate, but it should be of quite a close and a good representation of what's been going on. So those who haven't watched the channel before, um, I have 12 Q-cell 385 watt panels on a south facing roof in Swansea. I have a 5 kilowatt hour pure drive battery and a 5 kilowatt solace inverter. And this is a semi uh, from the 1930, from 1935 um, with three bedrooms. And there's two of us living in the house. Okay, so let's start off with the solar generation graph. So our generation for the month has been 500, sorry, no, it hasn't, it's been 654.8 kilowatt hours. And as you can see from the graph, there's been a lot of days above 20 and quite a few days where we've also been uh, hitting that 30 kilowatt hours a day. And there was a week in the middle of the month where we had some quite low generation. In fact, the lowest generation day was only 1.5 kilowatt hours. So we've had a lot of generation and if we have a look at this graph which compares my solar generation uh, from month on month for the past two and a half years since we've had the solar panels, you can see that this April, so April 2025, has been better than any month in 2024, including the peak months of May and June. So we're very happy with that. So it seems to have continued uh, March's trend of indicating that 2025 so far has been a very, very sunny year. Okay, so this is where the numbers have to um, be taken with a little bit of pinch of salt. So I know from my Octopus app, because I am with Octopus, and I get paid 15p for my export, that I made from my export £85.36p, which means I've exported 569 kilowatt hours back to the grid. So again, that's one of the highest, I think that is the highest we've ever exported back. So if you do want to sign up with Octopus, there's a referral link going across the bottom of the screen. So this is uh, uh, where things get a little bit complicated. So I had my heat pump installed on the, uh, from the 22nd to the 25th of April. And we've got a slight problem with the heat pump that the CT clamp that goes to my inverter is currently on the house side of the supply. So I've got, as part of my install, I've had to have my meter moved. So they've moved my meter from inside the kitchen to an outside box. And they've used the Henley block to split out the supply. So we've got a supply coming to the house and we've got a supply going to the heat pump. As I say, the CT clamp is coming on the house side, so it's not seeing the uh, heat pump. Uh, so the inverter, which the CT clamp is con connected to, is not seeing the inverter. So all these figures that I've got are pretty much w uh, what my house usage is. Um, it also means that my battery doesn't discharge to the heat pump, although excess solar does. So as I say, it's quite complicated and hopefully it'll be fixed next week. Anyway, so the house, so this is excluding the heat pump, um, we've used our usual monthly round 200 kilowatt hours. In fact, this month has been 207 kilowatt hours. And for that, we've imported 118.58 kilowatt hours. However, some of that is for the heat pump. So my heat pump data has indicated that so far, in those last six days, we used a total of 21 kilowatt hours, and most of this has been going towards heating hot water. And the amount of heat that came out was 55 kilowatt hours, which has given us a pot cop of only 2.6. But if we delve into those numbers a little bit deeper, we'll find that eight kilowatt hours has gone into heat, heat in the home, which output 
32 kilowatt hours, which is a copper four, which is spot on what we were expecting. Um, for the water, on the other hand, um, we have um, imported or we have used 13 kilowatt hours, and because well, uh, yeah, this we heat the water during our cheap period during the night when we're only paying 7p for electricity for Octopus Go. So we've imported or we've used imported 13 kilowatt hours for that. And that's put out 23 kilowatt hours of heat, which has only given us a, sco sco um, a scop of 1.77. Uh, I should say that these heat pump figures are. There are no decimal places in, in, um, involved, so they could be, they are quite inaccurate, especially when we're talking about these low numbers. Um, but part of that low scop or cop is because, sorry, uh, yeah, the SOP um, is because um, that includes the commission day where they were having to heat the water up quickly, which was also used in the. Um, immersion heater so i say these figures are all a little bit screw, uh, screw, uh, skewed in fact if you just look at yesterday um, the, heat, the um, efficiency for just heating the hot water was actually closer to three so yeah these numbers are have to be taken with a pinch of salt anyway so we can't really break down the numbers particularly accurately here but i know that from the octopus app my money I've spent on import is £12.77p. So that's my heat in for the past three days and hot, sorry, past six days in hot water, and pretty much all my electricity use for the house, which involves um, cooking with the electric oven. We have got a gas hob, well, we don't actually anymore, um, and just our general electricity uses has only cost us £12.77. So when we start looking then at the savings, this means we've saved about, I think, about £43 on our electricity bill. We would have paid £4.31 for gas in that last uh, six days, and that's calculated by taking the amount of heat output from the heat pump, um, so that 55 kilowatt hours, and times in that by the... Uh, amount I paid for gas, which was about 7p per kilowatt hour, and then adding an extra 10% because we were assuming that the boiler was only 90% efficient. So that was a saving of uh, £4.31. Also, we've uh, on the 24th, uh, we had our gas meter removed. So it means we weren't paying the standing charge from the 25th onwards. So that's a six days at around 30p, and or just over 30p which was our standing charge for our gas. So that means that um, that's an extra saving of £1.89. Uh, so that means an overall saving for the month of about £49. And then if we add that to our export or seg rate of £85.36, it means an overall payback on my green energy system, um, which includes the solar panels, and the heat pump of £130.26p. And you can see that this is, that's the most we've ever saved in a month from this graph. So how does that mean, what does that affect mean for our payback? So the solar panels and battery system, which we had fitted in August 2022, cost us £8,500. The heat pump is predicted to cost us £320, and that includes the change in five radiators, the hot water tank, and the heat pump, and the installation. And the reason why it was so cheap is because the original quote was £10,390, we had £7,500 grant, we had £250 off for order in October, when uh, Octopus had an offer on, I had £100 for using a referral code, and then I've also had another £450 from people using my referral code, which is on the screen now. Um, I also had to pay an extra £230 for um, planning permission, but then I'm also expecting to get £2,000 cash back from Halifax using their Green Living Rewards. So that takes down the total cost to about £3,200. It'll go up a little bit because of the um, 
work we need to have to move that CT clamp, which we'll have to get another company in to do. So, all in all, that means that our total uh, system cost is £8,820, and this month we've just passed through, through the £2,000 total payback time. Time. We've actually gone up to £2,004.09. So that means that our amount we still have to pay back on our entire system is 6800 which should take about another uh, six years to do. Maybe a little bit uh, less now when we see the numbers coming through uh, in the winter later this year. Um, but also, something else I'm planning on doing is buying some more batteries, which will cost probably another about 5, 000, over £5,000. So that's all stuff to look forward to. So the take home is it's been a very sunny, sunny uh, April. Um, these numbers may be a little bit fluctuating, but the majority of them are going to be right. And I think I've got all my maths right as well. Anyway, I'll say thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in another video very soon.